as a homeowner, right, the right to protect your family. If yeah. someone comes into your home that is robbing your home and you harm them, what does that mean? Well, if you're in your house, you a couple of things set up. One, you don't have to run out of your house. You do not have to retreat. You can defend your home. You're the king of that castle. And you're allowed to use force, reasonable force, to stop whatever's happening. And in, in re respect to a burglary or a robbery in that home, or a rape or assault, anything like that, you can use deadly physical force to stop the attack. And you're allowed to use deadly physical force. Could be a rifle, a gun, a shotgun, a knife, a baseball bat, anything that you could use, reasonably believe necessary to defend your home. The law calls that justification. It's a complicated statute, has a lot of ins and outs, but the bottom line is a homeowner can defend his house from anyone who comes inside to do wrong. And that's clear cut clear cut in the state of New York. Everything is dependent on the facts. So if the facts are clear cut, it's clear cut. Um, if you drag a person from outside in your house and then shoot them, that's not a defense of your premises. If you, if you are in a situation where a normal homeowner has someone in his house, finds him coming through his bedroom, finds him attacking his wife or his children, he can get his gun, he can get his shotgun and shoot that person dead. Is there any reason why someone wouldn't be justified in doing that? The only problem that could come up is if you are the initial attacker. Say you're having a party in your house and you have invitees there and you decide there's one person is getting you upset and you pick a fight with that person and it escalates. And it continues to escalate where you believe it's now an assault on you. You wouldn't be justified unless there was a complete break. You are no longer the initial aggressor. And then you can resort to the, the justification defense. So you can't start a fight with somebody, end up killing them and say self-defense because he was winning that fight. But for someone that is invading your home and robbing your home, it's clear cut. Someone comes in from the outside, burglarizes you robs you or attempts to, it's clear cut. It, and it doesn't matter if you, if you know that person, like? It, it, it does not matter what your relationship is outside, at, only as it pertains to the facts. Again, if you invited him over or you expected him to come over and you lay a trap for him, he walks in your door, you shoot him, claim rape or robbery or something, those facts might make something out to be a little different but in the normal circumstances person comes into your home you find them there in the middle of the night middle of the day it doesn't make a difference and you can use deadly physical force if you step outside of the home it's different though if you're out on the street different factors apply you're no longer defending your house and your castle you are now in a situation where you're defending yourself as a person or another person some other rules apply in that situation in New York, other than some other states, you have a duty to escape. If you can escape safely, if you can leave the situation without resorting to the, your use of deadly physical force, you're obliged to do that. So if you are out there, there's a situation going out there, and you're outside and people are fighting and they have a gun and you can escape by coming into your house, you might, you know, you, can, you have to do that before you just start shooting people. But uh, in the state of Florida, those stand your ground states, you don't have to do that. You can react as we've seen in those trials down there. Um, you can use force, but that's not the law in New York. If you can escape safely, you have to try. In terms of the home invasion aspect of it, how does New York State's laws stack up to like a Florida? How does it differ? Well, for the, for the actual inside the house justification, that's pretty much a nationwide countrywide situation in uh, the situations where you use force to arrest somebody or interfere with someone outside you some you see someone being raped in New York you can use deadly physical force you see them being robbed outside you can use deadly physical force but for assaults and things like that you can't use deadly physical force in Florida that person turns with his gun toward you 
even if he doesn't intend to shoot you, those stay in your ground state, state say you can just shoot to kill. And that's different than in New York? In New York, yeah. yes. Am I missing anything here? I mean, something that's important for people to consider. Well, the best thing to do is if you can avoid the situation, if you have a safe room or you can lock yourself away or you keep them out of wherever you are rather than going out to shoot somebody and getting involved. And of course, you, you shoot, they shoot, you risk your life and the life of your family. It's a dangerous situation. But if you're acting, you can act to defend your, uh, your safety, your person, your family, and stop a robbery, a rape, a burglary in your house. I know you're not involved in this case, and we don't have the full details, but this right here, someone came in, that person was killed, that's justified. Pretty much. Now, if he came in and he's armed and you know it's a burglary, he's got burglar tools, he pried open your doorway, you're pretty much set and clear. Issues arise, and we've seen them in other states, where a drunk comes home and comes to the wrong door and enters and has no intention of committing a crime in there. That's a trespass, not a burglary. And the facts become very uh, important. Um, you know, if you ask, you probably in that situation, you don't see a weapon, you see he's, you know, intoxicated, you might demand that he leave, you might try to get him to go. If he doesn't go, it escalates up. You can use deadly physical force because it might very well uh, be justified. How do you do as a homeowner, right? Like, How do you, you don't, you, it, it happens very, very quickly in real life. And this will be the facts. Um, uh, if you uh, have time to run, lock your doors in your other rooms, lock yourself in the bathroom, call the police, and you know it's a drunk and it's just a kid and he, and you could see that, and anybody looking at this situation could see that. It's not a burglary. You might want to try to do that. You might have problems with the DA looking hard at that. But if you're in the middle of the night, you're woken up, someone you hear a noise, the door's busted open, someone's in there, you don't need to ask a lot of questions. You can use deadly physical force. Along with the intoxication thing, right? Men like a mental, mental health challenge. What you're not a doctor. You're not required to ascertain what is really going on other than you're defending your family, yourself, and your home for a burglary or a robbery. That's the extent of your inquiry. It's always what a reasonable person would believe in the situation. And that will be presented to the jury, and it's presumed those are the reasonable people that are going to think about it. In your estimation, and I'm not getting you on the record, is sure. this something the DA looks at? Would they look at this? They look at these things very closely. They always empower the use of the grand jury to investigate. So the homeowner would get an attorney. Uh, if, the cuts, if the facts are clear cut, you may very well have a per the person testify in the grand jury. You may not. There's issues about whether anybody should ever testify in the grand jury. Um, but the DA looks at it and presents the facts. And if it's a clear-cut burglary, you've got someone who's got a history of burglaries and he had a gun and he broke the door open, you sit back, wait for the grand jury to say justification. And if they don't, if they bring a charge, well, then you raise that at trial and you should be able to prevail. One other question that's going through my mind, if it's, and, and you kind of, you kind of made your point, reasonably, if something's going on, you have that right. I mean, even if someone doesn't have a gun or a knife out, but they're, you know, they're in your... If, if, if you, it, it is a burglary if they enter your home with the intent to commit a crime. So if they're rifling through your things or carrying out uh, jewelry, you, you interrupt them in your house, uh, or you, you see that it's clearly a burglary you can act with the use of deadly physical force. Is there anything else that I'm missing that is important? To no, this? you pretty much have it. it it's, a, it's a right as a defense. And what that means is you have to be charged to use that defense. So um, in a grand jury may use it and not charge you, but if they do charge you, that's when that defense comes to play. So you could very well find yourself on the wrong end of an indictment in a close call situation or where there's other factors or um, you, you knew the person or things like that or the drunken uh, kid 
comes in the house and what you knew or didn't know might be a mental issue, what a reasonable person would do. But that is a defense, so it's there and available for you. Well recognized, well established, and generally accepted by juries in the appropriate situations. It's not a stretch. Um, what else? I what think about that, go if ahead. there is a, uh, like you're going through a divorce and a husband who has legal rights to the home breaks in and the wife. Or and it, so, well, now you're in the middle of a muck, right? Technically, you have to get over the hurdle of it being a burglary or a robbery. And uh, the odds that it is a burglary or a robbery in a matrimonial situation where both have title to the house, one may have possession or not, unless there's a stay away order, which is another issue. But absent that, you are, the wife just can't shoot the husband and save a lot of money for the divorce. Uh, whatever she saved on the divorce, she's going to spend uh, defending herself for the murder trial. Right. Um, but if you have a stay away order, you have a boyfriend girlfriend situation where both resided in the place. And, or husband and wife, and there is a stay away order from the judge to that person properly served that says stay out of this house, that becomes an illegal entry. And depending on any other facts, um, like he's shouting, I just want to talk, I just want to talk. Oh no, don't shoot me, I just want to talk. And there's somebody that hears that, you might have an issue, but uh, uh, if there's a stay away order, you can't come in that place, yeah. it's a burglary. Last one. If, how often do you see in this situation the homeowner being on the wrong side of this? On the wrong side where the homeowner ends up shooting somebody and ends up convicted of a crime? Not all that often. If you're the homeowner and there's a situation where there was a crime committed in your house, you're pretty much protected by these laws. Again, dependent on the facts, and it's happened where the person overreacts and acts improperly uh, and the DA can prove that, then you can have a conviction. But generally, these things are the clear cut ones are what we basically face ourselves with. But that's why we have lawyers, and yeah. that's why we have uh, these complicated laws. And the statute's very complex, and you really have to go section by section, word by word, and uh, to, to look and see, right? It gave you the, the basic overview of the situation. And what's that called again? Justif Justification, Justification is a defense, Article 37 of the PETA law. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, you're welcome. I Thank learned, you. I, I appreciate it.